Hi guys, Dane here, and today I am going to be doing my review of I Follow You by Peter James. So this is a standalone thriller novel. Peter James is responsible for the Roy Grace series, which I enjoy a lot. This was actually really interesting because it kind of takes him back to a genre that he's done in the past, but with his, like, you know, 2022 or whatever uh, writing abilities. So it was interesting to see that. I'm going to read you the blurb, I'm going to go through and check out my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads... To the outside world, charming and confident Dr. Marcus Valentine has it all. A loving wife, three kids and a great job. But there's something missing. There always has been. Driving to work one morning, his mind elsewhere and not on the road, he almost mows down a female jogger on a crossing. As she runs on, Marcus is transfixed. She is the spitting image of a girl he was infatuated with in his teens. A girl he has never been able to get out of his head. Lynette had dumped him harshly. For years he has fantasised about seeing her again. Might that jogger possibly be her after all this time? Could this be the most incredible coincidence? Despite all his attempts to resist, his thoughts are consumed by this woman. And when events take a tragically unexpected turn, his obsession threatens to destroy both their worlds. But still he won't stop. He can't stop. Because he's one of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. He doesn't really uh, have any attempts to resist it, to be honest. He just goes all in. And so throughout this... Um, He's obsessed with time. Um, so he, we get, his wife Clara told him mockingly, hate the word mockingly, more than once that the words timing is everything would be carved on his gravestone. Marcus knew he was a little obsessive, but to him timing was a matter of life and death. It was crucial in his profession, in the calculation of due dates of the babies of expectant mothers, and equally so during those critical moments of delivery. It mattered in pretty much every aspect of his life, of everyone's life. And they get talk of a, a running watch that has more computing power in it than NASA when they put the first man on the moon. But most calculators today have got more computing power than, than NASA had. It's just the exponential growth of computing. There's a reference to the words of that poem about your parents fucking you up. They fuck you up, your mum and dad. And we get this, he's, he's arguing with his wife. Come on, you always have an emergency something. Later isn't a time. Later is never. Is that what you tell your parents when they ask you when their baby is due? Later. She shook her head. No, you say June 11th or July 16th. Or knowing you, you probably say at 3.34pm precisely. Uh, 11th of June is my birthday. And he actually hates kids and he's thinking... Uh, when he sees the patients. Do you know what's ahead? Months of sleepless nights. And for some of you, the end of your life as you know it. All the sacrifices you'll both make over the years to come. Will you produce geniuses who'll change the world for the better, or ungrateful little bastards who'll turn you into an anxious mess? The gamble of life, a good kid or a waste of space. Nature, nurture, good parents, crap parents. You need a license to keep certain animals, but any irresponsible idiot can have kids. And we get this great little mini paragraph. As she'd lain in his reclining chair, feet up in stirrups, while he inspected her with a vaginal speculum, tut-tutting, she'd exclaimed in anger that she couldn't see how the hell anyone ever got pregnant, and always remembered his words in his strong Scottish burr. What you have to understand, Mrs Chandler, there is an awful lot of copulation that goes on in the world. And uh, there's a mention that Jersey increases its landmass by a third when the tide is out, which I thought was quite interesting. So jo Georgie, who uh, runs a fitness business, um, she ends up getting the ability to use the hotel gym for free um, in exchange for like checking up on it for the owner. But she says it reminds her of the Overlook Hotel in the Stephen King novel, The Shining. We have a reference to a vegan going to the dinner party. A vegan, a peanut allergy, someone lactose intolerant, and another I'm pretty sure is a pescatarian. Yeah, there's a reference to not wanting to be stuck next to a woman who, at Aldridge's party last week, nailed him in a corner and spent an hour telling him the entire plot, chapter by chapter, of the dreary novel about a doctor she's been writing for the past five years. And and so, um, yeah, he's out. To, he's looking out for the woman he almost ran over. Um, he knows you, that she was a jogger, and um, he finds her on a running gap. And he, he says he checked her other recorded runs. Many of them started and finished at the same point and time. Could it be her? Could it? Was that start and finish point her home? Almost certainly. So it's kind of a warning tale of the dangers of sharing too much on social networks. Uh, I read this out to my other half. Um, you are the love of my life. You are the reason I want to wake up in the morning. You are my life. I love you to bits. I will love you to the ends of the earth and beyond, okay? And uh, there's a reference to Robbie Williams, or whoever it was, said that watching your wife giving birth was like watching your favourite pub burn down. And uh, Georgie, who's pregnant, she's having cravings for uh, pickled onions. Which, funnily enough, my mum had cravings for pickled onions when she was pregnant with me, and now she hates them, but I love them. Uh, Marks, the doctor, his mum commits suicide by drinking a bottle of bleach. It took her three days of agony to die. What a horrible way to go. We get a reference to 2.30 being dentist time. 
uh, a joke that I have made before. I've actually had dentist appointments at 2.30 to have my teeth pulled out. And we get this, which I thought was interesting. He remembered one young mother lying in bed holding her baby just a few days after a traumatic birth, looking up at him and saying, strange to think this tiny thing will one day be pushing me around in a wheelchair. And there's a reference to like breech births being fatal back in the day. But surely that's the point cardigan press, natural selection. Eventually that mother will be edited out of the gene pool. Barnaby, I didn't take the Hippocratic Oath out of allegiance to the sodding gene pool. I went into medicine to help people. If you don't get that, then you're in the wrong bloody profession. Um, and also, so Marcus is wondering why he became um, a paediatrician, an obstetrician. Um, in the past, he'd always known the answer before he'd had children of his own. The excitement of seeing new life full of hope and expectation. He loved the parents treating him like a god. He loved that feeling most of all, playing god. But it was more than that, wasn't it? If he dared to be truly honest with himself, wasn't it about those feelings of intimacy with women? Being allowed to see what in his mind was the holy grail of femininity, to experience the touch, the smell, the smell of power. We get a reference to that old mantra, success is not getting what you want, it's wanting what you have. We also get a reference to the motivational expression, if you're going through hell, keep going, um, which is, uh, it's also been used in a song by the street, so that's why I know it. And this just made me chuckle, this being evil, but it kind of shows you, bearing in mind this guy is uh, an obstetrician. He didn't start running again until he had crested the hill, by which time almost all the pack was ahead of him, except for a couple of old men who were power walking, and a woman determinedly striding with a pushchair and gaining on him fast. The baby inside, protected by a crinkly see-through rain cover, looked like a ready meal from the chill section of a supermarket, he thought. Microwave, five minutes. We get, we get this little bit, which I've heard before, but I think it's worth repeating. Uh, do you know why people touch glasses? I suspect I'm about to find out goes back to the Middle Ages when no one trusted anyone. If you went to someone else's castle and were offered a drink, your glass would be filled to the brim, as would be your hosts. As you touched glasses, you'd make sure some of your wine or ale slopped into your hosts. That way, if you were being given poison, he'd drink it too. I like this as well. Uh, I've never owned a boat, but an old mucker of mine, Paul Templeman, who was my best man first time round, you'll meet him one day, made a shitload of money in property development and bought a yacht, which turned out to be a money pit. He said you have two moments of happiness when you own a boat. The first is the day you buy it, and the second is the day you sell it. And we get this from Roger. An engineer I knew back in my RAF days once told me something that's very true. He said the problem with making anything idiot proof is that idiots have a great deal of ingenuity. I think I read that in a Terry Pratchett Discord novel once. We get a reference to a clock reading 1111, um, which is just a thing me and me and Shay, we like wish each other a happy 1111 when we notice it. We get a reference, so Georgia goes back to the hotel and she goes, normally walking down the long dark corridor scared her, but tonight she was fine, confident that no spectral lady was about to climb out of a bathtub or that no intruder was about to bash her over the head. And uh, they, they find a, a, a fundraising page for uh, Marcus Valentine, which reads, Hi, and thanks for visiting my fundraising page. I'm cycling to raise money for mine because I must be mental for once marrying my now soon-to-be ex-wife, Elaine. And let's not talk about my mother. Only joking. Hope you can help me raise lots of money. Then I might come begging for more when the ex rinses me in the divorce. And that tells you a lot about the kind of person Marcus Valentine is. A dick. And another great Roger quote. On the day the world ends, the last sound anyone will hear will be the voice of an expert explaining why it could not happen. So yeah, I Follow You by Peter James. A pretty good thriller. As I say, it's because it's more recent. His writing's really developed in recent years. So I really enjoyed it. I thought it was very well done. It's cool that it highlights the dangers of social networking and oversharing. And also, I guess he's moved to Jersey now. He did used to live in Brighton. But I think from what I read in the afterword, he now lives in Jersey, which which is why this is set there. So that was quite interesting too. Uh, I gave it a strong four out of five. So there we have it, that's what I made of I Follow You by Peter James. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot, bye bye.